Good morning guys and welcome to my channel My Dear Math. We have already finished the trigonometry chapter. We have done the basics. We have done a few practice sums in all the concepts that have been covered in the trigonometry chapter. Now it is very important that we practice more sums so that we get used to a certain pattern so that it is easy for us to apply during the CBSE examination or CBSE board paper. In this particular class we are going to practice those sums which have actually appeared in the previous year's question papers or in the sample question paper as given by CBSE. So now let us start with the first sum. If 4 cot theta is equal to 5 then the value of 5 sin theta minus 4 cos theta divided by 5 sin theta plus 4 cos theta is 4 choices are given to us. We need to identify the correct choice. This particular sum I have solved in two different ways. You can follow whichever method you are more comfortable with. In the first method, I have taken cot theta to be 5 by 4 and I have drawn a right angle triangle and mark the adjacent side and the opposite side because cot theta is adjacent side by opposite side and I have used the variable k and I have found out the length of the hypotenuse as root 41k. Now it is very easy for me to find out the value of sin theta and cos theta. After getting the values of sin theta and cos theta, I have substituted in 5 sin theta minus 4 cos theta by the denominator and here I am getting 5 into 4k and there I am getting 4 into 5k which both will give me a 20k so that the numerator becomes a 0. I do not even need to solve the denominator. So I am getting the final value as 0. In the second method, I have used the identity cosecant square theta minus cot square theta is equal to 1. So since I know the value of cot square theta, I can find the value of cosecant square theta. I am getting 41 by 16, giving me the value of cosec theta as root 41 by root 16, which is root 41 by 4. I am taking only the positive value because all these terms are in the first quadrant. All the values are positive. Once I get cosec theta, I can easily get sin theta by taking the reciprocal. So, I am getting 4 by root 41. Then by drawing the triangle, I am getting cos theta as 5 by root 41. Now, you can substitute this particular value 4 by root 41 and 5 by root 41 in this way and get the final value as a 0. The next question is an assertion reasoning question. Now this kind of questions requires a thorough understanding of the concept. It may not, may or may not be based on calculations, but definitely conceptual knowledge is very essential. Now let us see the question. The assertion which is given by A is the maximum value of 1 by sec theta plus 1 by cosec theta is a 1. The reasoning is maximum value of both sin theta and cos theta is a 1. Now, in this type of questions, we will be given four options. One of the options will be that the assertion is right and the reasoning is right and the reasoning is the correct explanation for the assertion. The second option will be assertion is right and the reasoning is right but reasoning is not the correct explanation for the assertion. Now, the third option will be assertion is right but the reasoning is wrong or the fourth will be assertion is wrong, reasoning is right. So, what should we do in this type of questions? We have to individually assess whether each statement is correct and whether the reasoning statement can explain what happened with assertion. Okay. Now, let us see whether these two statements are individually correct. What is our assertion? The maximum value of 1 by sec theta plus 1 by cosec theta is a 1. So, let us see how to assess whether this is right or wrong. What is the maximum value of 1 by sec theta? Because this is one of the quantities of this 1 by sec theta the maximum value occurs when sec theta is a minimum correct so sec theta the minimum value is a 0 so i will get 1 by 0 which is a very very huge value which is an undetermined value now an undetermined value of 1 by sec theta added to whatever value of 1 by cos theta will not give me 1 it is going to give me again a very huge value if you are adding any value of 1 by cosec theta to infinity, we are always going to get infinity. So, the assertion that the maximum value of this is 1 is wrong. So, A is wrong. Now, let us see what happens with R. 
maximum value of both sin theta and cos theta is a 1. We know it is true because in the first quadrant, the maximum value is a 1 and the minimum value is a 0. So, my reasoning R is correct. So, my assertion A is wrong and my reasoning R is correct. The question that I have written over here is a two mark question and because there is step marking in two mark questions, I have also written the mark wise split for the steps which again I have taken from the CBSE website. And in the CBSE website, there is a particular method that is given. Normally, most students follow that method, but I have also written another method which is also absolutely correct. So, if you are following a different method from what is given in the answer key for the examiner, you don't have to worry at all. If your logic is correct and your steps are correct, you will definitely get the mark. Now, let us see both the methods. So, the question is, if sin a minus cos a is equal to 0, then find the value of 2 tan square a plus 1 by cosecant square a plus 1. Okay. Now, sin a minus cos a will give me sin a is equal to cos a. This is possible only when angle a is equal to 45 degree. For none of the other angles in the first quadrant, sin a and cos a will be equal. So, a is equal to 45 degree. For that, you will get half a mark for identifying the angle A. Now that you have identified the angle, it is very easy. Tan square A will become tan square 45. Tan 45 is a 1. Tan square 45 is also a 1. Okay. Now I have got 1, sorry, 1 by cosecant square A. Now which is basically sin square A. So A is 45 means sin square A will become sin square 45. Sin 45 is a 1 by root 2. The square of it will give me a 1 by 2 plus 1. When you add it up, it's a 7 by 2. So you can see how the mark has been split. For identifying angle A as a 45 degree, you will get a half a mark. Okay. Now for substituting the correct values over here, you will get 1 mark. And for the final answer, you will get half mark, which will add up to 2 mark. Okay. Now you don't have to worry like you don't have to write exactly the same steps. But you know when you are following this particular method, identification of A will definitely be there. Substitution of values also will be there and the final answer also will be there. Correct. Now let us move on to the next method. In this particular method, I have not used A is equal to 45. So how did I do it? Sin A is equal to cos A. So sin A divided by cos A will be tan A which will give me 1. So I got the value of tan a. So I know the value of tan square a, which is 1 square, which is again 1. Okay. Now, cosecant square a minus cot square a is a 1. Now, if tan square a is a 1 or tan a is a 1, what's the value of cot a? If tan a is a 1, cot a is also a 1. So, one. so my cot square a is a 1 again. So, cosecant square a minus 1 is equal to 1. Cosecant square a will give me 1 plus 1, 2. Now, it is very easy for me. I know the value of tan a is a 1. I know the value of cosecant square is a 2. So, when I am substituting it over here, I will get 7 by 2. It does not matter which method you are following. Just make sure you write the necessary steps. If you are using any identities, like the way I have used over here, I have not written it down, but make sure you write the identity that you are using. Now, let us do a 3 marker. Sin raised to 4 theta minus cos raised to 4 theta plus 1 into cosecant square theta is equal to 2. We need to prove that. Looks like a slightly complicated one, but let us see how we can do this. First, I will explain how to do the sum and then I will write down the steps with the marking. And we will also try to see if there are any alternate methods in which we can do this particular sum. Whenever you have terms with powers with a negative sign in between, always our first tendency is to apply the identity a square minus b square. So what is the identity a square minus b square equal to? It is a plus b into a minus b. Now you know that it does not matter what the power is over here. We can actually convert any of the powers into this particular form. How do we do that? Suppose we have a raised to 4 minus b raised to 4. This is actually of the form a square the whole square minus b square the whole square. This now became 
a square minus b square. This is a plus b into a minus b which is a is my a square. So this is a square plus b square into a square minus b square. Now let us look at the question. A raised to 4 minus B raised to 4. We have a similar term. Sin raised to 4 theta minus cos raised to 4 theta. So let us apply this particular formula over here and see what we are getting. Compare this identity with this. So sin raised to 4 theta minus cos raised to 4 theta now became sin square theta plus cos square theta into sin square theta minus cos square theta plus 1 into cosecant square theta. That is my LHS. So let us see whether we can simplify what is sin square theta plus cos square theta? You know the identity value is a 1. So this term became a 1. So what is remaining? Sin square theta minus cos square theta into 1 plus 1. So let, it, let us write it down neatly and see what we are getting. This term became 1. So I am left with sin square theta minus cos square theta plus 1 into cosecant square theta. Now I have chosen to open the bracket. So when I am opening the bracket, cosecant square theta into sin square theta becomes a 1 because they are reciprocals of each other. Minus cos square theta into cosecant square theta plus 1 into cosecant square theta will give me this. Okay. Now 1 is retained as such. Cos square theta into cosecant square theta. Cosecant square theta is actually 1 by sin square theta which is cos theta by sin theta the whole square which is cot theta the whole square. So, I will get minus cot square theta plus cosecant square theta. You know the identity. Cosecant square theta minus cot square theta is equal to 1. So, 1, 1 plus 1 is a 2. Now, let us see how the mark has been split for, sorry, for applying the identity a square minus b square. Over here, it is 1 mark. Okay. After that, Writing it in this way, it is 1 mark and opening the bracket and solving and getting a 2, it is a 1 mark. Now, can you tell me a different way in which you can do this particular sum? Now, when we reach at this particular step, sin square theta minus cos square theta plus 1, instead of opening the bracket, you can write Okay, now 1 minus cos square theta is actually sin square theta. So what will you get over here? You will get sin square theta plus sin square theta into cosec square theta. 2 sin square theta into cosecant square theta will give you 2 again. That is a different way in which you can deviate from this particular step. I have chosen to open the bracket. You can simplify it in this way and get 2 as the answer. Can we do this sum without using the identity? We can. Now we are moving on to the third method in which you can do this particular sum. If it, you know, all this sounds very confusing for you, you don't have to bother about multiple methods. Choose the method that you are comfortable with and move on. For other students who are not comfortable with applying the identity to this particular sum, you can follow this particular method. I have simply opened the bracket in LHS. Cosecant square theta into sine raised to 4 theta. What would it give me? Sine square theta into sine square theta into cosecant square theta. Sine raised to 4 theta is sine square theta into sine square theta. Sine square theta and cosecant square theta are reciprocals of each other which will cancel and give me only sine square theta. Now the next term is a cos raised to 4 theta into cosecant square theta. I cannot cancel anything. So I am writing it as cos raised to 4 theta by sin square theta. Okay. Plus cosecant square theta. This is my LHS. Now sin square theta is retained as such minus cos raised to 4 theta is cos square theta into cos square theta. Now one cos square theta I have retained as such. The other cos square theta by sin square theta is a cot square theta. Correct. Plus cosecant square theta. Fine. Sin square theta minus cos square theta. The cot square theta, I am writing it as cosecant square theta minus 1 
from the identity cosecant square theta minus cot square theta is a 1. So from this, what is my cot square theta? It is cosecant square theta minus 1. So now let us look at the next step. Sin square theta is retained as such minus cos square theta into cosecant square theta basically is cos square theta divided by sin square theta which is my cot square theta. Minus cos square theta into minus 1 will give me plus cos square theta plus cosecant square theta. Now it is the application of two identities again. Sin square theta plus cos square theta and cosecant square theta minus cot square theta. Both are equal to 1 adding them will give me a 2. Okay. So now your question will be how the mark will be split if you are doing this particular sum and the mark is it and it is for 3 marks. In all probability this is how the mark would be split for writing cosecant square theta as a sin square theta and for opening the bracket and by simply to simplify this term as a cos square theta into cot square theta you will get 1 mark and then application of the identity and the opening of the bracket you will get 1 mark and the final simplification should be 1 mark. Okay, so make sure you do not skip any steps because if you skip steps, one thing is that you will lose mark. Second thing is that you will only get confused while you are writing the answer, especially for proving sums. Fine. We have another three marker. If sin x plus cosec x is equal to 2, we need to find the value of sin raised to 90 in x plus cosec raised to 20 x. Now, when you are having sums like this, you need to understand that if you are trying to individually find the values of sin raised to 19x or cosec raised to 20x, that value will have to be small, which means that the value of sin x has to be small. Otherwise, you cannot find the value of sin raised to 19x, which means that there is an easy way to find the value of sin x or cosec index from the data that is given to you. So what is the data that is given to you? You know sin x plus cosecant x is equal to 2 from the question. We also know sin x is the reciprocal of cosecant x and vice versa. We also know a few trigonometric identities and how and we also know we have a general idea about up, how to apply it to the sums. So let us see how we can simplify the given information in order to get the values of sin x. Okay. Now sin x plus cosecant x is equal to 2. Now our first logic is to convert cosecant x into sin x. I have always told you try to convert cosec x or a sec x or a cot x into the terms that we are more comfortable with. Not in every single case but in most cases. So now let me convert cosec x as a sin x. Now I have a rational term over here. Let me take the LCM. Fine. Or I can write it as now this is of the form a square minus 2ab plus b square is equal to 0. Where my a is sin x and b is a 1. So how can I write it? I can write it as sin x minus 1 the whole square is equal to a 0 or my sin x is equal to a 1. Okay. Now I get the value of sin x. What is the value of cosec x? It is a 1 because it is a reciprocal of sin x. Now what is the value of sin raised to 90 in x? It is 1 raised to 90. It is equal to 1. What is the value of cosec raised to 20 x? It is again 1 raised to 20 which is a 1. So my final value is a 2. Clear? 